Let's go. Where are you guys? Good night, teacher. Good night. Aleluya. Laurita. I am here. It is. <laughs> Finally. Finally, teacher. <laughs> I am. I am insist. Yeah, I, you are, I am insisting. You are insisting. Ah, okay. Yes. okay. That's the most important thing. <laughs> Very good, Laurita. Continue insisting, continue coming. You need to practice. If you don't practice, yes. no English. I know. Yes, yes, yes. That's yes. the most, the most important part. Thank you, thank you, thank you, teacher. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so let's practice. We have a new lesson today new lesson new part let's study everybody uh, let's go through pointing this is lesson 10 uh -huh. and then lesson 11 was descriptions lesson 12 was descriptions lesson 13 gerunds Mm -hmm. Okay. No, let's pass to different intentions. I think this is more important in this moment. Okay. Let's practice, my people, and let's go through lesson. Mm -hmm. 12. This is not lesson 15. We need to change this section. Lesson 12. Excellent. Okay. Different intentions. Everybody pay attention because today we are going to learn a very specific form of expression. Okay. What happened to Juan? <laughs> Perfect. So let's go through different intentions. Why different intentions? Well, intention is the most important part on speaking. You need to have an intention when you communicate. Intention is similar to say, this like this intention is equivalent to the reason for my communication mm -hmm. why I need to communicate with you uh -huh. When we speak about, or when we, in a normal conversation, we have different intentions. Mm -hmm. For example, the intentions that you have seen in the past was number one, Intention number one, a description. What is the intention of, of a description? Or what is the birth for a description? How do you form a, a sentence of descriptions? Who remembers? Use the verb to be. Exactly. When you want to describe something, we use the verb be. Give me a description, Laurita. My desk is black. Excellent. Very good. Person, my desk, then be, and then description. My desk is black this is a description 
structure number one. And then we studied structure or intention number two. Intention number two, hints. How do you form a routine, a sentence for a routine, guys? Tell me a routine of you, Easty. An action that you routinarily do. Um, routine. I got up mm -hmm. um, every day at uh, six o no six uh, e m e a b c d e f g a a m no uh, a a a m a m Excellent. Now, everything is perfect except the verb. Got is past. Got up. In present? Get. 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 Complete. Um, I get up uh, every day at uh, 7 a.m. Excellent, girl. Very good. This is structure number two. I, then a verb in present. Possibly with the person with the termination S and a complement. Right? Descriptions and routines. I get up at 7 a.m. every day. Very good. Benji, give me a description. Um, <clears throat> maybe uh, that that car is red. That car is red. That's an excellent description. That car is red. And now, give me a routine. A routine of another person, not you. Let's take, for example, your best friend, your brother, your sister, your father, your mother, another okay. person. Uh, my my father. Uh, my father usually eat, eats. Uh, Excellent. It's... Uh, food with Coca-Cola. Excellent. Perfect, perfect. Your father usually eats food with Coca-Cola. That's an excellent example, and this is precisely the objective. And then we study an additional form of expression. We study expressions for future plans or things happening right now. What is the structure for things happening right now? Mm. Subject mass verb ah, to be. Mass is Spanish in English. Plus, plus, plus to verb to be plus um, e, uh, ng a b c d e f g i n g i n g exactly yes. that's correct so yes now for future we use the verb b plus the i n g an i n g verb 
Naomi, Laurita, what is your plan for this weekend? Yes. Um, my plan in this weekend is I, I am going mm -hmm. to visit my, my cousin. Sounds good. Sounds excellent. I am going to visit my cousin. Or I am visiting, not okay. necessarily going. No? I am vis I am visiting my cousin. Perfect. That's correct. Teacher cousin is primo? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Here that was to clarify. <laughs> Perfect. So this is exactly the thing. Tell me, Isti, what are your plans for this weekend? Tomorrow, uh -huh. uh, we we are watching uh -huh. uh, the game uh, uh, Me Me Mexico versus Argentina. Yeah, no? <laughs> exactly. Mexico versus Argentina. That's correct. Of course. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> With all the Mexican partners, do you have friends? Um, yes, but um, I I I'm going to watch with my brother-in-law. Oh, cool! <laughs> is your is is your brother-in-law in Canada too? Yes. <laughs> wow, that's all the family went. Uh, yes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> very good. Very, very good. Enjoy the game. Enjoy Thank the game. You. Mexico will win. Hope. Hope. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> exactly. It's messy. I mean. It's messy. It's very difficult. But okay. It nets. It nets. It nets hope. Many hope. Ah, uh, it's many. No, much. Much. Yes, much hope. Much hope, yes, much, hope. much, hope. much hope because <laughs> messy is difficult, eh? Yeah. It's not <laughs> an easy game. It's not an easy game. Okay, very, very good. So Messi, there you have it. Um, Messi is the the best. Yes. The best. The best. The best. In the world. <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi. That's impossible, <laughs> you know? But okay, okay, that's, you make sense, precisely. This is, this is the thing. And Benji, what are your plans for this weekend? Mm, this weekend, I am playing video games. Mm. Fantastic. What video game do you play? Do you usually play? Uh, in this case, I, I am playing the uh, Resident Evil. Oh, cool. Perfect, perfect. Enjoy your weekend playing video games and having snacks. Right? Perfect, perfect. This is exactly the point. So, as you can see, your structure was correct. I am playing ING. And finally, yesterday we reviewed number four, how to speak about predictions or uh, spontaneous decisions. Spontaneous future. What is the formula for a spontaneous future? No formula, but what is necessary? What is, what, what is the expression for a spontaneous future? Use will. Exactly. In this case, we use will, and then we use the verb, the simple verb, or the verb in simple form. In this moment, we will study a very similar formula for will. And as you can see, something that you need to observe, observe,
that one intention is equivalent to one different formula. Do you see this? You cannot speak in present every time. You need to alternate the formulas. Sometimes it's the verb be, sometimes it's in present, sometimes it's ing, sometimes it's will. It depends on your intention. Everything depends on your intention. Okay. Well, today, today we will learn a new formula. Observe this. What is the golden rule for will? The golden rule for will is about the verb. When we use will, the verb goes in simple form. Necessary simple form. You cannot use will in an ing. That is impossible. And also a very common mistake is when people say, I will to go. Oh no, this is also a big problem. This is incorrect, and this is incorrect. Never use will with connector or ing. Always, always necessary, the simple form of the verb. Just like this. I will go, I will travel, I will practice. No? This specific formula exists in all the expressions that you will learn today. All these expressions have the same or all the same expressions need the verb in simple form. What expressions are we talking about? We are talking about modal verbs. Can, may, must, shall, will, could, might, should, ought to, and would. Right? Observe the structure is similar to the formula for will. It's exactly the same. Yes or no? Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. Perfect. There you go. Will, can, may, must, shall. Are you familiar with modal verbs? Do you... Who can give me an example 
with a model uh, uh, with a model verb that is not will. Participation. Give me examples. Mm. Um, I can. I can learn. No, I can read in the next exercise, teacher. <laughs> okay, so this is a question or an affirmation? Af ah, no. And say, can I read uh, the next ex exercise, teacher? Perfect. <laughs> so this was a permission question. Yeah. No, a question for permission. Can I read the next exercise? That is correct. Very, very good. And yes, you can use it in an interrogation form, right? Who can give me an affirmation? Mm, I can I can ride bike. For example, <laughs> I can ride bike, excellent. That's correct. And other guys? What about Hector, give me an example with one model verb that you know. Good night, teacher. <laughs> Hello, brother. Good night. <laughs> uh, I must... Uh -huh. uh, I must do a report for my boss every day. I must... Can you repeat? I must do mm -hmm. a report mm -hmm. for my boss. That sounds very good, eh? I must do a report for my boss every how often? Day? Every day. Every day. Interesting. Very, very interesting. All right. What about Laurita? Give me one, one yeah. example. May I speak English in class? Very good. This is a permission similar to is this question. Yes. Can I? May I? That's correct. Mm -hmm. And Benji, give me one more. Um. Um. I. I should study more for my lesson English. Nice. Lesson English, switch. English lesson? Correct, complete. Uh, 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 <laughs> I, should, I should study more for my English lesson. Excellent. I should study more. Should is a recommendation. <laughs> no? Perfect, perfect. So you are familiar to these expressions, right? Some of them are very, very easy to understand. The, uh, can, will, must, uh, and should, the examples that you made, they are very, very nice and very simple. But some are very complicated to understand. I consider the most difficult are would, could, might, and probably ought to. You know? So we will study all in this lesson. Let's study. A model verb changes the intention of your verb. I repeat, a model verb changes the intention of your verb. Mm -hmm. There are 10 modal verbs in English language. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There are eleven. Uh, well, first, 
in English language. If you want to express yourself in different intentions, different intentions, you have to learn how to use them. You are familiar with some, but let me teach you very specific applications for modal verbs. Intention number one. Let's study will. Similar to the previous class, right? What is will for? When we use will, we express three situations. What do we express with will? It's not future, eh? What do we express with will? Yesterday's class. A promise? Promise, okay. Yes. Yesterday we speak about one in specific. For example, when you decide to go to the store. You say, I... I will go to the store. What is this? This is not a promise. No, it's a spontaneous decision. Excellent, Benji. When you talk will, we speak about spontaneous decisions. Okay, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's right here, exactly. Spontaneous decisions, promises, and predictions. Right? So, similar to this, will, only will, is for promises, predictions, and spontaneous decisions. If you see another, you can use the negative for will. To speak about questions, no, the negative. I will not, contraction, I won't. So when you say, what is the negative for will? Won't. Correct. Negative for will, won't. Isti, give me an example of a negative promise. Mm, I won't clean the kitchen <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> okay, tomorrow. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, because you were very convic convinced, you know? <laughs> Perfect. I won't clean the kitchen tomorrow. Tomorrow is the game. Tomorrow is football. Sorry. Right? Perfect. Benji, give me a negative spontaneous decision. Um, I will, I will not, bueno, or I want uh -huh. help, help you in the chain, the right of the car. <laughs> okay, eliminate in the, again, repeat. Uh, I, I want can uh, uh -huh. help you. Eliminate can. Can is another ah. modal verb you cannot use to only one. Uh, okay. Uh, I I will I will not can't. This is mm -hmm. not possible. Mm -hmm. That's the Spanglish. In English, only one modal verb, and that's it. It's impossible to to make a combination okay that's why because if you say can it's an ability and if you say won't it's a decision ability and decision are not equivalent mm. you see this is thinking in english okay Entonces, mm -hmm. ese, uh, I'm, 
I will not help you mm -hmm. to the change the ride of the car. Exactly. And eliminate. What is the contraction for will not? Uh, won't. Complete. I, Repetition. I won't help you to the change of the right of the car. Excellent. The right, don't you mean the wheel? Uh, well, no. Yeah, I think, I think you mean wheel. Ah, uh, yes, sí. Bueno, eso me refería. Yes, sí, sí, otra cosa. No Spanish, no Spanish. All the English. You can say, I, I, I said a different thing. Right? Wheel. Wheel. Okay. Complete. Again. Okay. Um, I want to help you to change the wheel of the car. Excellent, brother. That's English. <laughs> Very good. And this is super important, guys. I won't help you. This is a very common phrase. I won't help you. I won't go. I won't travel. I won't visit, etc., etc., etc. Okay? okay. Take a note. In English, contractions are more common. Okay, I repeat, in English, contractions are more common. So super important that you dominate won't. Will not is correct, but American people say won't. Ready? There you go. Laurita, give me a negative prediction. I won't ask the question. I won't ask the question. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and the last one. Hector, make a negative promise. I won't wake up early tomorrow. Excellent. You won't wake up early tomorrow. Excellent decision, brother. Tomorrow is Saturday. No questions. Yes. Right? Sir. <laughs> excellent, brother. Excellent, excellent. That's it. Very good. With this information, let's pass them to this. Modal verbs, we can better understand modal verbs in three groups. Okay? Group number one is a modal verb for future. No, group number two is a group for abilities. Okay, we can include also group number, group number three, probably, because there are also modal verbs for past. Mm -hmm. This is better. Okay, let's make a little modification here. That's much better. Group number one are the group for the future. Group number two is a group for abilities. Group number three is a group for the past. And group number four is the group for other intentions. 
random intentions, different intentions. Mm -hmm. Of course, group in group number one, we have will, obviously, but also we have would. Let's study would. Please read the first section. Uh, Hector. Director, are you in? Yes, teacher. Sorry. We use word to talk about imaginary things, wishes, desires, or formal invitations. Right. Examples. I would love to have a Tesla. Wish and desires. I would go to that party, accepting an invitation. Mm -hmm. And I would fly from fly from my house to the job. Imaginary. So please observe the three examples. Thank you very much, Hector. The three examples that you have here is for imaginary theater. Observe that we are talking about an imaginary future. Right? We are talking in this moment about a future that is probable possible or probable impossible for example idea number one i would love to have a tesla this is kind of a wish a desire in the future probably i will have a tesla but in these moments i don't have a tesla so this is a combination of present and future this combination usually uses would love, would like, and would hate. Would love, would like, would hate. Tell me things that you would like to do. Benji. Um, I would, would, mm -hmm. okay, I would to like, uh oh, formula, eliminate to, ah, uh, sure, I would, I would like mm -hmm. to be a president of the country. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's a desire, that's a wish, that's imaginary. Very good. Isti, give me something that you would hate to do. I, I would, I wouldn't. No. <laughs> I wouldn't, that's negative. Mm -mm. I would I, hate. Excellent. Uh, I would hate. Um, to, to learn Chinese. Oh, what an excellent thing. Very good. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Chinese is super complicated. Mm -hmm. Very good. Laurita, tell me something that you would love to do. Mm, yes. I would love to travel 
now. You would love to travel now. What an excellent thing. Good. And what about Hector? Tell me something that you would enjoy this weekend. I would love to have a, um, I don't know. <laughs> think, think about it, think about it. I, I would love to, ah, oh, okay. I would love to win Mexico tomorrow. I okay 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 okay. I would love to win Mexico. This is this is a I understand that you will have Mexico for you. You will dominate uh -huh. Mexico. Okay. You know, like Pinky and Brains to dominate. Uh -huh. You know, but you are not going to dominate Mexico tomorrow. Yes. Right? Yes. Oh, that, <laughs> you oh, will no, dominate oh, Mexico. My, it's, it's my is my wish for, for tomorrow. Okay, but your wish is about the the World Cup. Uh -huh. uh, Mexico versus Argentina. Yes. Your idea doesn't communicate Mexico uh, okay. versus Argentina. You see, you would love, it's complicated. You would love that connector for two ideas. You would love that Mexico wins. Okay. You see? In this case, is I would love to... It, is correct too or or not? Check this out. You you will you will get when is necessary to and when not. When you have birth and then after that another birth, right? You need to connect. It's like a like a puzzle. You know what I mean? Let's imagine that this is uh, this is it's impossible to connect this. You see? You cannot connect this to this, no? Huh. Necessary. You need a connector. The connector for these two pieces is a connector too. Okay. You see? But in this case, in this case, you have Mexico wins. Mexico is not a verb. Do you agree? Okay. So you cannot use two. You have I would love Mexico win. Love is a verb. And Mexico is a concept. There is no match, you see? So two is impossible. The connector for ideas is person birth complement. Person birth complement plus person birth complement. This is complicated, eh? Person birth complement plus person birth complement, connector, that. Okay. 
This is the way you connect two ideas. Technically, you have two is a connector. Connector for two verbs. Mm -hmm. And that is a connector for two ideas. Ideas, sentences. Do you see the difference? Okay. Yeah. Well. I know this is complicated, this is not in the plan, but this is necessary in this moment. So complete idea, Hector. What would you love this weekend? Okay. I would love that Mexico wins. You are correct. That's it. Did you take notes on the two connectors, guys? I have a question, teacher. Uh, in this case, uh, we use that with the connector uh, by the connect two ideas. Correct. Uh, is the similar analogy uh, with the comparison, the class? Bueno, de la clase anterior. The last, the last class. The last is, class. Yes, similar. The yeah. difference in the previous class is not that. For for comparisons is than. Comparison, sí. Than and that's it. Comparisons need that because connector to no ideas, sino to objects. Two objects, ajá. But be careful, it's not that, eh? It's different. Ah, okay. Ah, sí, sí. You see? So then, many people confuse that versus sí. them. Sí. <laughs> okay. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Separate the two concepts. Sí. Okay. Very yeah. good question. Very, very good question. Good. Thank you. This is for for comparison. Very, very good. Do you see do you see a, a color pattern in this moment? I usually usually have a color pattern. Take a note here. Color code for the classes. Grammar is very, very difficult. So I like to make an easy indication or easy uh, identification for concepts in English. I usually collocate colors to make a grammatical identification. Huh? I have this, I have this, I have this, and I have this. Okay, on color blue, in this case, Laura and Hector, you know this information. What color do we call, what grammatical concept do we use with, for color blue? Verb to be? Incorrect. Ow. Color blue. <laughs> what do we use in color blue, guys? Subject. Close. Yes, but not always. Mm -mm. Subject is usually the, the face, the happy face. Anyone? Grammar? <laughs> no. Grammar. Ah, person. English? <laughs> person, close, but not. Mm -mm. No. 
ahorita, do you remember? You are my only hope. This person <laughs> Persons, uh, not really, because persons is a face. Person is a, this, this is a person. But it's not blue. Person is, is a, the emoji. So no, 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 no. When you are talking about blue, in blue, I always collocate names and contents. What are contents? Nice Countable concept. and uncountable now. Concept. Okay. Huh? Look at Mexico. Mexico is blue. You see? And yes, probably Mexico is a person in this case, but... Uh, probably not, probably in other contexts is not the person. You need to, to, to identify the difference between person and concept. It's very different, okay? Concepts is, for example, coffee, cup, cell phone, uh, Fernando, Mexico, Mr. Perez, Isti, Benji. These are concepts. But the person, the person is in a complete idea. The person is part of the formula. Okay. The person will be the formula and the concept is an independent object. Okay. Different thing. On color green... What are in color green, guys? Verb. Exactly. Verbs and action. Verbs. In this moment, you will see auxiliaries. Verbs and auxiliaries. And finish. In color yellow, what do you see? Connector. Preposition. Connector. Prep. Connectors and prepositions, exactly. Mm -hmm. And in the previous classes, we saw descriptions. In orange, we use adjectives. What are adjectives? Mm -hmm. They are descriptions. So, for example, in this case, what color goes wins? Black. Black? No, but what? No, what it's color? Um, green. Exactly. Green. Wind go in color green because Fair. it's ever. Exactly. The color code is makes grammar easy. Easy grammar. Verb and the verb. Grammar is super easy when you see colors. Guys, take a screenshot, take a moment. Jesse will pass attendance. Hello, Jess. Hi, thank you. Good hi. night. Good night. So I will say attendance, please. Yes. Is he Grecia? Mm -mm. Absent. No. Juan Angel? Juan Angel absent too. All right. Hugo? Hello, present. Good night. Hi. Hi, Hugo. Thank you. Lau? Present. Good night. Hi, Lau. Thank you. Luz? Luz absent. Okay. Herson? Herson absent. Benji? Present. Hi, Benji. Thank you. Hi. Isti? Present. Hi, Isti. Thank you. Hi, Isti. So, somebody else? Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a nice night. Thank you. You too, girl. Thank you. To you.
Perfect. There you go, guys. So if you observe, if you observe the slides, you will always have the colors. You see? Colors, colors, colors. Excellent. So now coming back to the idea. In this moment, you expressed a wish, no? Let's continue expressing a different thing. Let's express an invitation. When you accept an invitation and you make an invitation, we use would. Mm -hmm. And we normally use the verb. Eliminate like. Like is not necessary when you make an invitation. The most classic, classic invitation is when a woman or when a man is going to marry her husband. Yes, that's the most classic invitation with wood. What is the question? Mm, would you marry me? Exactly. <laughs> marry in simple form. Mary? Be careful. Uh -huh. Because Mary is a verb. And married is in past. Married. You see? So, repeat the question. Would you marry me? Exactly. Would you marry me? You see that is not necessary like. Right? Like is not necessary. What other invitation can you invent? Try to make an example with would formal invitation. Mm, would you dance it with me? Very good. <laughs> Dancing is ing. Be careful. A dance, dance. Dance exactly. Repeat. Would you dance with with me? Excellent question. Would you dance with me? And the re the answer is the. Sorry. The answer. Um. Yes, I could. Yes, I would. I would birth compliment. Uh, yes, I would like. <laughs> uh -uh, because the question is dance, not like. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, I could dance with you. <laughs> yes, exactly. Ah, that's the difference. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would dance with you. Naturally, we normally say would like, would like, would like, would like in a repetition, but it's not like is not necessary. This is okay. super, super important. Eliminate like. Right? Excellent example. So this is a, would you like, would you dance? Just like that. An interrogation and an affirmation. And the next one, another invitation, Benji. Okay. Um... Will you? No. Uh, will you want a piece of my uh, 
of my food, no, of my cake is pastel, ¿no? Yes, of course. <laughs> yes. My, you know. uh, yes, 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 correct, again. Will you, will you want a piece of my cake? Excellent. Would you want a piece of my cake? Okay, yes, of course. Good. Would you want a piece of my cake? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Excellent. So there you have an invitation. What is the answer to that question, Benji? If I ask you, would you want a piece of cake, a piece of my cake, what would you say? Uh, maybe, uh, no, I wouldn't because I am a diet. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I am, the connector is on. I am on a diet. Ah, okay, I am on a diet. Exactly, this is the correct expression. Oh, but that's a very interesting answer. Negative wouldn't is necessary to reject the invitation. Let's take a note about this. Opposite of accept, reject. Yeah. So I wouldn't. One, you wouldn't want. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want a piece of your cake. Okay. Exactly. Uh -huh. I wouldn't want a piece of your cake. Thank you very much. Okay. This is rejecting the invitation. Opposite of accepting, guys. Guys, opposite of accepting. <laughs> Guys, opposite of accepting. I good. I no, good I, what? Accept, accept. Accept. What is the contrary for accept? Accept. Reject. 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 You see? Okay. Accept invitation. Reject invitation. Okay. Ah. Opposite. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. okay Accepting okay. in the reject. Re reject. Reject. Ah. Uh -huh, exactly. Uh -huh. Reject. Perfect. New vocabulary. Is the contrary. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. Formal invitations, wishes and desires, and at the end, um, let's collocate the formal invitation here. The most classic would be Mary. Classic. There we go. Remember to speak about questions, you need to switch, invert, switch. To switch. No. Uh oh. You need to switch the subject and the modal verb. Let me collocate. Switch. Okay. You switch the subject and the modal verb. So let's make in, uh, questions and affirmations for imaginary things. Hector, ask a question to Laurita for an imaginary thing. Something crazy, something that you can invent in this moment. Are you the director? Hector. 
Laurita is not there. Okay, so contrary. Laurita, ask a question to Isti. Yes. For an imaginary thing. Imaginary Invent something crazy. Mm -hmm. hmm. Could you mm -hmm. take okay. a shower in the night? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. But this is not imaginary. This is more like... Okay. Imaginary situation. Mm. I don't know, teacher. I uh, would you would you like um, the I don't I would you like I don't know, teacher. In this moment, I don't. <laughs> you have any imagination? Let's talk about the shower. Okay. Let's, let's expand the, the question of the shower. Probably not in the night. Okay. Let's could, talk... you, could you take a shower with... With... With the cup. <laughs> With the with, <laughs> with the dog. <laughs> with the dog. <laughs> oh, with the caprio. With, with his. With the caprio. Ah, <laughs> que. With the <laughs> the uh, favorite favorite his no with two favorite actor. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> Laurita, you want a divorce or what? <laughs> <laughs> This imaginary situation. Ah, okay. <laughs> I, I recommend you say no. <laughs> I, recommend. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think other things. Okay, okay. That's, a, that's an interesting uh, question. Obviously, I, good, I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't oh. take the shower with my my crush <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ oh my god this is family time well no nine o'clock is not family time <laughs> Jesus Christ excellent very very good example I would you take I would not take I wouldn't take right that is the option very very good Hector, are you there? Yes, teacher, come back. You're back. Excellent, very good. So, Benji, ask a, ask a question about imaginary things to Hector. Okay, uh, Hector. Mm, uh, Hector. Um, would you would you like no mm -hmm. would you run fast like mm -hmm. a flash? <laughs> okay. Can you please repeat with the question? Okay, yes. repeat the Hector, question. Okay, Hector, would you run or other actor would you run? Fast like the flash. <laughs> uh, yes, I uh, <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't I wouldn't run fast. <laughs> <laughs> like the flash. <laughs> right? That's it, that's it, excellent. Okay, okay, I wouldn't run fast like the flash. But, but it's imaginary, Hector. I mean, if you say I wouldn't, it's because you prefer a different superpower. What superpower would you take? Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's imaginary. If you say would, yes, probably yes. Oh, yes, I, I, I would run like a flash exactly 
this is more common. If you, this is a very interesting co contrast. I don't run fast like flash. I don't. Don't means present, real. You see? Old is imaginary. So I don't run like flash, but I would run like flash. Okay. I don't have a Tesla, but I would drive a Tesla. Yes. Why not? Do you see the difference? Yes, teacher. Right? That's a very important contrast because don't is real life. Would or wouldn't is in the year. Take a note, guys. Very important note. Huh? Don't versus wouldn't. <laughs> All right, so there is the thing. Let me find you and let me teach you a new expression. When you are super, super formal, you use expressions. Oh, you mind. This is expression. Would you mind? It's similar to say, please. Okay? This is very independent from the previous examples. If you say, please speak Spanish. Please speak Spanish. Yes. Or repeat, please. A classic in the class. Please speak Spanish and repeat please is basic English. Kindergarten English. A1 English. <laughs> Thank you, teacher. <laughs> with respect. With respect, of course. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. In, in this moment, in this moment, you are up okay you are not kindergarten finally <laughs> okay okay <laughs> so let's eliminate the repeat please and let's say teacher would you mind speaking spanish please I... yes of course no problem in that context yes formal and very very good English. Mm -hmm. Teacher, would you mind repeating option two? Would you mind repeating the audio? Oh, wow. Yes, sir. And in a normal conversation, super, super nice. Observe the verb. The verb is not simple form. You see? What is the verb? ING. Exactly. Um... The verb is ING in this case. So, would you mind doing? Mm. You see? Mm. Would you mind practicing? Would you mind expressing? Give me a formal request, a polite request. Uh, let's imagine, imagine Isti, that you are in the in the um, subway, mm -hmm. and you need you need to exit. Mm -hmm. Ask me to move. Excuse me, sir. Would you mind show me? No. Show. Showing? No. Exactly. Showing. Showing. 
showing mm, the exercise? No. Okay. okay. No, the, the exercise, the, the exit. The exit. Ah, okay. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. That's you are thinking in the class. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Okay, repetition. Would you um, uh, Good to my show. Showing uh -huh. the exit, please. Yes, of course. The exit is to the left, turn to the right, go directly. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> Very good. Mm -hmm. Benji, ask politely to, to turn the television down. Because you need to study. Turn the television down. Um. This case will. Okay. Would you mind mm -hmm. turning exactly the television down? Yes, please? of course. I'm sorry. Yes, of course. You can continue studying. You see? Okay. Good, Benji. Good, 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 good. Perfect. Hector, ask politely to pass you the salt for your fries. Would you mind give me a salt? Oh, give is simple form. Please. Look at the formula. Would you mind give me? Uh -huh. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you mind? Ah. <laughs> what is the ing for give? <laughs> relax, Victor. Relax, relax. You can, you can <laughs> give. Give. Giving. Yes, that's correct. A good idea. <laughs> Would you mind giving the salt, please? Yes, of course. Here is the salt, sir. Fine, gentleman. Excellent. And Laurita, ask politely to speak Spanish. Would you mind speaking Spanish? Yes, of course. Empiezo a hablar español porque Laurita lo pidió tan formalmente. <laughs> Thank you, teacher. Yes, of course. <laughs> That's it. Como pueden ver, esta fórmula es algo un poquito diferente que la anterior. Estudienla, porque la anterior es normal, ¿no? El uh -huh. will, will y el verbo normal. Pero aquí sí cambia un poquito. Uh -huh. ¿Por qué cambia? Porque hashtag inglés, así es el inglés. Yo no lo este inventé, es yo no nuevo. Lo este es nuevo. Anótalo. Y suena súper formal. Es normal, este se usa, como vamos a hacer una entrevista de trabajo al final de este nivel, es muy, muy importante. Si lo pueden hacer, es porque están aprendiendo el inglés bien, bien. Entonces, aprendense esta, esta estructura. ¿Vale? Very good, my people. Terminamos por el día de hoy. Time up. Excelente clase. El día, de, el día de lunes vamos a continuar con, las, con los siguientes modal verbs. Hoy nada más vimos would. Eh, si, puede, si quieren hacer ejemplos o si quieren hacer algún tipo de, de ejercicio como... Sí, más ejemplos. Yo se los checo, ¿vale? Para que sigan practicando. Y pues nada, disfruten el juego mañana. Y Disfrutemos. Yes. Es hora de descansar y ver a Messi llorar. Sí, por favor. Correcto. Correcto. Descansen, buenas noches.
You too, guys. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. See bye. you. Bye. See you Monday. See you next week. Bye. See you next week, brother. Bye bye. Let's go.